Hi, Chris. Lovely to meet up with you once again and start working on your game. Lovely to see you back where you belonged on a golf mat, hitting some shots, uh, working on your swing. Everything seems like it's working pretty well, considering the layoff you've had. Um, and the lack of practice you've had, obviously due to your difficulties, things aren't in bad shape to be fair. And what we tend to do is we, re re we sort of revert back to what we've done in the past. If we take a little look at this, your initial swing of the day, what we see is not a bad setup. Stance can get a little bit narrow at times, we know that. As you go back, it tends to be very much sort of top half driven. The left arm's got a limited uh, amount of movement. The lower body looks quite restricted and the left knee in particular for you governs everything that you do really in the backswing. This left knee stays out in front of the golf ball for way too long. That in turn is limiting the amount of hip turn we can create, which is limiting the amount of travel the shoulders can take and in turn is limiting the degree of movement in the left arm and the butt of the club. So it's quite a restricted uh, bottom half, causing you some problems there initially during your session. So what we did was we talked about something that we've done in the past where we've now got, we've just added a little bit to it. We've got a cane through the belt hoops, uh, the front of you there, and the instruction was to get the cane to work down throughout the backswing and to propel the butt of the club as far as you can. Now the reason for the cane in place is as you're propelling the butt of the club as far as you can, you're going to extend more and for longer. As we extend more and for longer, we have to left tilt more to offset that, otherwise the head's going to lift uh, during the backswing. That extension, that early extension that you see a lot of golfers have uh, in the downswing is actually created during the backswing as a result of insufficient left tilt. So the, the cane working down is working the knees differently and the extension on the way back is propelling the butt of the club. The knees are a linkage system. If the lead leg flexes and works inwards and downwards, that's going to allow you to propel the butt of the club further, getting the shoulder travel more, getting the hips turning on more of a tilted angle. Remember, the hips have got to turn. We've got to free that backswing up. That's you rehearsing it. So the goal now is to propel the butt of the club as far as you can whilst working the cane downwards throughout the backswing. As we do that we start to see that the hips turn more freely but they turn on a tilted angle. The left arm travels further and there's a considerable improvement in the freedom of the golf swing and the amount of shoulder turn that we create. So left arm travelling further, shoulders travelling further, hips turning more on a tilted angle, a much, much less restricted look to the backswing at that point. Now, you talked about this sort of rotation of the club face from, from sort of P6.5 uh, through to P8, there's quite a dramatic closure on the club face uh, a lot of the time, even when you're hitting the ball relatively well. Uh, if we take a look, a look, a little look at your setup position, this was viewed from above, obviously directly above, uh, midway through your session. Um, we talked about obviously improving the mechanics of the backswing. But we also talked about what's going on here. Now, the red line is where we want the golf ball ideally to end up. So that's our target line. And what we're trying to do with the club face is, you know, point it in the general direction we want the ball to start. So what we've got here is a, is a club face that's sort of that's about 15 degrees open at setup. Now that projected out onto the range, you know, 160 and further down will produce a very wide shot cone. So what we talked about was not necessarily changing your grip but changing your attachment to the golf club. Ideally what we'd want to see is a slightly less open club face there at address. Sort of maybe somewhere between the two would be ideally suited. So we've got the club face pointing to the right, but not as far right as we have at the moment with the green line. Uh, the problem we've got there, Chris, is that if we do come through with passive hands, we're going to push it way too far to the right. So the only real way we can close the club face 
sufficiently to the path to give us the shot we want is by rolling accumulator 3 a little bit too excessively now we've done properly uh, the system requires very little of any independent use of accumulator 3 the closing of the face to the path is produced by your extension through impact which in turn raises the butt of the club which in turn closes the face to the path so we shouldn't yet will accumulate a three roll through the swing 100 percent should we be manipulating it consciously through the hit definitely not not if we want to do it uh, efficiently and in a repetitive manner so there's the key thoughts from your last session look forward to working with you on the i think we said it was the 29th i'll text across and confirm that with you a little bit later today sorry for the delay in the recap uh, but hope this finds you well hope your goals work nicely and more than anything hope you're in good health speak to you soon well done